Despite all the turmoil in the global economy, and there's a lot of turmoil, Alcoa, the world's largest aluminum company, still managed to deliver a terrific quarter after the close today. A magnificent eight-cent earnings beat off of a 23-cent basis, substantially higher than expected revenues. That had been the big wrap. Rose 8.2% year-over-year. No one was looking for that. And the company reaffirmed its full-year aluminum demand growth forecast. This stock has been on a real roll lately, more than doubling over the last 12 months. We've been behind it all the way. It's up 28% since we last spoke to the company CEO in April. As Alcoa has increasingly shifted toward making high-value-added, high-margin aluminum products, while the aerospace and automobile industries embrace lightweighting in a major way, meaning they're replacing all sorts of heavy materials like steel with lighter aluminum as a way to boost fuel efficiency. It's all coming together in an amazingly powerful way. So why don't we check in with the bankable Klaus Kleinfeld, chairman and CEO of Alcoa, learn more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Kleinfeld, welcome back to Mad Money. Hello, Jim. Good to see you. Klaus, congratulations. You traced out a long time ago when we first met a path that Alcoa could go on, where it would become proprietary, less commodity, where you would close the difficult plants most people felt you couldn't, couldn't do, where you would find new uses yourself, just using intellectual capital to come up with new uses. It's all come together with a shockingly better than expected both earnings and, more important for some, revenues. Which are the real drivers of how you could pull off this top-bottom beat at a time when many are worried about a softening world economy? That's true. Well, you know how we do it. I mean, you said it already. I mean, we basically are building two things. One is a, a multi-materials, innovative, lightweighting powerhouse. And, and uh, the second thing is we are getting a globally competitive commodities business. So on the first front, I mean, this quarter tells the whole story. You actually see that we are firing really on all cylinders. We have the top, the best performance ever really on our downstream business on an absolute basis as well as on a margin basis. You saw an increase of profitability year over year of 45% in the midstream. And uh, the, the best quarter in the, in the uh, upstream business and our commodity business since the start of the crisis, basically since the second half of 08, when it really started to get weaker. And, and uh, so what have we done? I mean, we have on the one hand, you know, improved our capabilities and, and the value at side. And you show, saw, saw it again this, uh, this quarter. I mean, you basically saw we announced the acquisition of Firth Rickson, doubling the content in, in, in engines and jet engines. Uh, we are already we were already were strong in this, and now we are even stronger with this. By the way, most of this is not aluminum. Almost all of it is not aluminum, right? Most of it is titanium or nickel nickel super alloys. So very very cool. Adding technology into it, right? We just announced last week the opening of our, of our aluminum lithium plant in Lafayette. That's on the value add side, finding new application like an automotive. And on the on the commodity side, we have been curtailing capacity. Twenty eight percent of our upstream capacity is curtailed or closed, right? We closed again, and you saw some of it in the restructuring. We closed again some smelters that most people would have thought are never closable. We did it, right? And at the same time, we came down on the cost curve as well as came down with a break-even point, increased our value proposition, and here it is. The profitability is there. We got also a little bit of tailwinds there at once in a while. That all comes together, and I think it really confirms we are on the right course. But why is it, why is aluminum, why is the commodity not like iron? Uh, not like nickel, not like copper, not like the grains, not like oil, all of which are in free fall right now. Why is this metal different? Well, it's different uh, for a whole host of reasons. You know, I, I mean, I can only speak to speak to aluminum. I don't know the other the others that well. I mean, we see a growth for aluminum. We confirm it this quarter of seven percent um, consumption growth, right? So that's that's one thing. And the second thing is that when you look at what's called the regional premium, which is really a reflection of physical demand and supply, much more than the LME traded metal prices, which is more a function of general sentiment because most of the players in that market really don't want to ever come close to a pound of aluminum. So in reality, I mean, the regional premium is up. It's actually at a record high. So it be basically shows that the physical demand for the good is very, very high. And it's a reflection of all the end market this goes into. I mean, look at this quarter. I mean, we got a, two record, record contracts, one coming from Pratt & Whitney on the engine side, a one billion plus contract. The second 
second one coming from Boeing, again, a one billion plus multi-year contract. The second one, basically all aluminum and all aluminum, modern aluminum alloys also in it, right? You saw automotive, the F-150 comes to the showrooms in the fourth quarter. You know, this, you saw the, the, the uptick in the, in the commercial uh, trucking business, here in the U.S. particularly, you know, very, very strong end markets and aluminum on top of it penetrating those markets even more, building and construction, another great market. So really, I mean, we have a lot of good things happening and we have the right products. We invested into innovation. We have technology that meets the demand and technology that really caters to what the customers need. But, you know, you shocked me earlier when I was interviewing with Kelly. You said, look, you know, Europe isn't as bad as you think. I look at your deck. You're actually increasing Europe 2 to 4 percent global production for auto. Are we just too darn gloomy, Klaus? No, well, y yes, we might see it a little bit too gloomy. Uh, th that's one thing. But if you look a little bit more, more specifically, actually, uh, the reason why we're upping it, because our number was a little bit on the conservative side when, uh, when we looked at the first half of the year. And when you look at really what has been going on in terms of order intake on automotive, even if the fourth quarter goes further down, which we expect, we expect the further weakening in the fourth quarter in the European automotive market, but overall, for the whole year, that's what's driving it up. So that's kind of more a technical correction, you know. But uh, I think I would go in line with folks that, that when you talk to the Europeans, they would say the European auto market is suffering, and it's suffering relative to the strengths that it had in the beginning of the year. That is really correct. There have been a lot of talk that maybe aerospace has declined in its velocity of growth. Your reports make me feel like, if anything, it's strong and could get stronger. Uh, I absolutely, absolutely agree. I mean, as I just said, I mean, there, there are what, what are the big drivers there? I mean, you, you saw on the one hand, I mean, we project for this year eight to nine percent growth in aerospace, and overall for the next year, we roughly think it's about seven percent uh, in the next the next couple of years. And th this is a market, and I don't know whether I know any other market or have ever seen in my lifetime any other market that has a nine-year order backlog. You know, and even if there is some cyclicality, you know coming in, we are looking at it constantly. We actually don't think the cyclicality will hit, will hit anything in terms of a dip on the orders in the next, let's say, three to five years. So, and as many, much of that is driven by what's happening on this planet. More people coming on, more middle class growing, people want to travel. And then the other thing, uh, which is the other cool thing, what's driving the demand for new airplanes, it's driving, the demand for new airplanes is driven by fuel efficiency. And the fuel efficiency is mainly driven by the new engines. And that's why it's so exciting that we're expanding on the engine side, the acquisition on Firth Rixon plus our capabilities on the engine side. And as I said, most of it non-aluminum, right? This is very, very exciting because it caters exactly to that sweet spot. Well, you know what? You changed it. It's not a story that blows with the wind or blows with commodities or blows with the gross domestic product. It's everything you said it could be, and it finally happened. Congratulations to Klaus Kleinfeld, Chairman and CEO of Alcoa. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Alcoa has gone higher. It really pulled it off. Maybe it can break away from the orb of gloom that even has, unfortunately, subsumed me. Mad Money's back here.